dog in question today's name is Bruiser. Well, it's that's an alias, and it's a conocorso cross. Um, I did see an image of him. He looks like he might have some uh, pit bull in him or something. Um, he's a neutered male, now eight years of age, and uh, he became part of this household's life at four months of age. Dear Ask the Dog Guy, I moved into my roommate's home in March. Currently, three dogs also live in the home. A seven-year-old Jack Russell Terrier named Elmo, that's an alias, is female, uh, and a Chihuahua named Chimi, also a female and also an alias, and Bruiser, the conocorso cross that I'm writing about. Bruiser is roughly eight years old. My roommate recently told me that in the past, Bruiser bit my ex-husband's leg and a neighbor's leg on two separate occasions because they were horsing around with her and the dog thought she was in trouble. My opinion is the dog should be able to judge when people are running around playing versus someone being attacked. Anyway, things got better for a while. Unfortunately, a couple of days ago, Bruiser attacked another dog and killed it. My roommate had brought her friend's dog to our house because we would be watching the dog for a little while. Bobo, an al also an alias, is a small, partially blind and deaf mixed breed, 16 years of age. While standing in the living room, I saw Bruiser attack this de defenseless dog, ripping its entire stomach open. Bobo was immediately rushed to the vet and sadly had to be put down. I would really love a little advice. What should we do? Samantha, also an alias, USA. Well, let's start off with the things that stand out. Um, the first thing to note, this dog lives with three dogs, uh, or lives with two dogs. So um, you, you would think if this was a, a case of dog aggression, uh, or the dog's tolerance for any other dog in its life, uh, we'd know this by now. Uh, and, and this is not unusual. Like uh, most of these problems are, are, are created by a dog owner who, well, I can't even blame the dog owners, uh, it's just the dog world, the dog training world, and how we're raised. Um, you know, people seem to think that Disney movies about dogs are, um, uh, you know, templates for how they behave and how you're supposed to train them. And, uh, you know, when you're living with like a, a, a like a, a minivan breed, a Labrador or a Golden Retriever, you know, you might get goofy. But when you're dream, uh, living with these Ferraris, uh, particularly a Conocorso, uh, dogs that are bred to guard and... and uh, protect the territory and uh, um, run down boars and all that kind of stuff, um, you know, you really got to set the bar a lot higher as far as what your responsibilities are for training and living with the, these dogs. Even the way you select the breeder for a dog like this and how that dog is influenced temperament-wise uh, until it's 12 weeks, all of those things become way more important. I, all, I, you know, I don't want to even suggest it's not important for all dogs. It, it is, but boy, oh boy, the downside for breeds like this is usually they lose their lives. So uh, that's the first thing, dogs live with other dogs. The other is this dog's eight years of age. And so uh, again, un uh, this the person writing is coming in and may not have the entire story, but there was certainly um, a mention that the dog is, has uh, gone for a, a couple of human beings as, as well. So it, it's possible that, you know, when I ask people, you know, is your dog aggressive or, or whatever, sometimes the, the people will say no, and they don't realize how much they're working around that dog's behavior to get through life without incidents. So, you know, uh, who clips your dog's toenails? Oh, God, no, I got to take him to the vets for that. Uh, why? Well, because he won't let me. Well, the dog's aggressive. Well, it might be just goofy and you can't hold them still but if the reason you, you 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 can't give a dog a certain type of thing to chew is because you can't coexist with the dog in proximity that there are issues that doesn't mean working around aggression does not mean the dog's not aggressive so um if they've owned that dog for eight years at, at, like basically from a pup um, I'd like a lot more information. I'd be digging pretty darn deep here and asking a lot of questions to find out uh, what else has gone on because, um, you know, I suspect I know what's going on here, at least peripherally speaking, but uh, there may be some other influencers that would guide, you know, suggest to me that I might provide some guidance in a somewhat different way, but we're going to go on the basis of the information that I have. So uh, why can, how come this dog's living with three dogs or two other dogs and is fine? Well, Territory is something that, um, you know, like, I'm not a big fan of taking a dog to a dog park. Like, I wouldn't drop my kids off downtown and say, go make some friends. Because, uh, you know, 
you kind of want to screen like how are they going to behave and how's my dog going to behave and that's and uh, how's my beha dog behaving as a puppy versus as an adult all those things change and what you want to kind of look at is what's what happens in nature like what is a dog supposed to do when it encounters a strange dog in nature well their cousins their wolves have a quick quick solution kill it uh, it's a it is if they're not part of your pack they compete for your resources run them down until they are long gone or dead uh, our dogs have elements of that they may not go all cujo but they do get a little bit some more than others uh, but what you'll end up finding depending on their breeding and how you know or domestication over all this time is when they encounter an unfamiliar dog they're either going to be aggressively territorial or aggressively uh, friendly so what we want to do is, is understand that encountering unfamiliar uh, dogs is uh, can be a trigger and Interestingly enough, uh, what you'll find sometimes is that territorial trigger isn't extended out and about for some dogs. It's only if the dog comes on their territory. So, sorry, I got a call there. I forgot to turn my phone off. Um, so, uh, in this case, what happened is we brought a dog onto this dog's territory. And so, uh, one of the things you want to keep in mind is if you're trying to develop a relationship, because you're going to need your dog to be around another dog on an ongoing basis, there's certain things you need to do. And one of the first things you do is you don't meet on one of the dog's territories. It's particularly with the genetics that this dog has driving them. Because they could have been friends, maybe, but you set the dog up to go, uh oh, competitor, and off they go. That might have been all this happened. It's possible. I can't say that I've seen a lot of instances of this, but you know, you hear uh, sometimes, well, they sense weakness or there was illness as this was a very elderly dog with some, some issues and uh, uh, that's why it happened. I need to see a little more evidence that that's uh, uh, as influential as one might think, but or, or, or as they're suggesting, but uh, w let's not dismiss it. Perhaps it's extenuating. That's how what we find out in the history. Has this dog ever had any other dogs come over and, and done this? Or does the dog have to be put away? Or we just avoided it? Again, we just don't quite have the right amount of information uh, just yet. A huge mistake that can make this far more likely, particularly with this type of genetics, is not understanding that your dog is learning 24 hours a day, seven days a week, whether you're teaching or not. And if that dog is allowed to look out windows when you're home or when you're not home, the dog sees its territory being infringed upon. Maybe not in a rural area, but certainly in an urban or suburban environment, they will see more out a window in a morning than they're hardwired to accept. Uh, or, well, they're not really hardwired to accept it. Uh, it's just the frequency short circuits them. It's just too much. So, you know, if, uh, um, you know, I, I said to this dog, geez, why did you do this? The dog might go, John, you know what? These people I live with have no idea how many dogs trying to break into the house every day. I don't know how this one got in. And I'm exhausted. I'll, they'd have nothing if I wasn't here. Dogs would rob us blind. Uh, we set them up to fail. So I don't care how much training you're doing with the dog. If you're leaving them in that situation, you can undo it very, very easily because there's just too many. It's kind of like leaving a kid alone in a mall unsupervised and when they come home and they go, Dad, you're not going to believe this place. Why? There's chocolate bars everywhere. Do you want one? It's not bad from the dog's perspective. It's a guard dog. It's supposed to do that. But if you don't guide them through the environment where you expose them to and the way that you train and shape them, well, this is what you run into. I do have a, uh, a PDF that I prepared uh, I'll, I'll put a link to it uh, on introducing t dogs uh, where you need to, where it's going to be, and where you're really worried about. I, I, I'll tell you up front, it really anal. Like I, I, It's based on 30 years of everything going wrong that could possibly go wrong. And you may never need to be as careful as I am with all those suggestions in the PDF. But better to be over-informed than under-informed if, if you're in a situation where you've got a dog where you, you know he doesn't particularly like other dogs, but he needs to kind of get acclimatized. Because I always tell people they can get along with other dogs. They're, they grow up with them. It's just that we, we set them up as a, in, a, in an introduction manner that can go south uh, just as easily as north. And so um, they, they normally have 
known relationships as they grow up and they live with lots. So it's not that just because there's another dog, they, they go crazy. It's other dogs they don't know enough about. That's what causes the problem quite often. Uh, what else have I got in my notes here? Um, oh, the, 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 the person who wrote said, uh, in, in uh, her opinion, a dog should be able to judge when people are running around playing versus someone being attacked. Uh, that's optimistic. Um, again, dogs have certain instincts and you got to kind of like realize your dog is like, uh, you know, a four or five year old child with maybe a bit of a attention deficit problem or a learning disability. That's, they're dogs and they're in an environment that's often far more complex than they evolved to be in. So better safe than sorry. Uh, so I, I, I think that what happens is we do get people who get these uh, kind of courses and press scenarios and, you know, guard dogs, uh, Roddy's and all that kind of stuff. And they fan the flames. And I, I tell you, any idiot can get those dogs to turn on. Uh, but we're supposed to lay a rock solid uh, genetic foundation, stability, uh, temperament, uh, critical socialization, three to 12 weeks of age. And the training is got to be far better than what is typically offered out there with this treat, 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 or as is often the case, the might is right, yank and crank um, uh, nonsense as well. What, what we, it's, it's learning that these dogs are working animals, they're tools, and they're, they don't know to make the right decisions. So when you say these dogs should be able to judge, well, was this dog trained? Because most dogs aren't. Most dogs are raised by their hormones and the genetic programs of their species and the selective breeding characteristics of their breed. And what's really missing is actual training methodology. Usually it's ideology. Usually they think they're people they're living with. They love them, but they think they're roommates. And so the, the way their behavior evolves, they don't learn to exercise their suck it up muscle, their self-control in a way that would be useful. So I don't think it's so bad that the dog can't do better. But again, it's uh, you, you have to, is, is the dog supposed to naturally know not to herd, not to fetch, retrieve, not to guard? No, that requires training. And the higher the drive on the dog, the more, um, the more of the investment in that training and how much more difficult it is to maintain the training. And, and uh, so some people get the dogs and they just don't have the time for them uh, uh, to do that. So um, like I had a dog who, he, he hated dogs, he was German Shepherd. Um, it was kind of like hardwired into him. It was kind of his bloodlines were there could only be one. Uh, he and I watched the movie, The uh, Highlander too many times. So if uh, well, I Google it, uh, there could only be one. Uh, you're not going to change these dogs' natures, but with the right training, they know how to exercise self-control. So Bo would, you know, if we were out, out and about and he saw a dog, because he was trained, he, he didn't go, oh, I love all dogs. He would look at me and go, could I kill this one? No, you can't. It's just a little one. I don't think anybody will miss it. No, keep doing your heel or your cum. Or, it, it takes a while to to get that level. And the higher drive dog you've got, highly intelligent, the more uh, is required on the other end of the leash as well. So um, where to go from here? Well, uh, first thing I'm gonna suggest is anybody in this situation is I have an article, it's free. Uh, it's called the seven options available to dog owners with dogs with very serious behavior problems, aggression. and. Uh, it's uh, it's basically a, a thought workflow. So you you want to like when we have dogs like this. I mean, people love their dogs, and uh, we're supposed to feel responsibility and 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 uh, and do what we're supposed to do as dog owners. But we we also it doesn't absolve us of our responsibility to our friends and families and uh, acquaintances and anybody that dog's going to cross paths with so when you're in a situation where the dog's showing this level of aggression uh, you want to make sure that you've done everything that you could possibly do and that's the purpose of this article it's a sort of a synopsis of my 30 years of experience of the options if you read this thing and you go here's another option let me know what it is but these are the ones that I, I believe people have. Um, for this dog, I would be checking quite carefully 
crit, thinking critically here, have I taught, is this dog trained? Uh, is this dog just doing tricks? Like, can I control him without a distraction? Will he listen to me while, if stay, while I'm making a, a, a cup of tea? Because if you can't get him to listen to you in that context, he's not trained. How are you going to get him to listen when he's turned on, when the hormones kick in, when the genetic programs kick in? Uh, another thing I would do is check to make sure you're not, you're not fanning these flames without realizing it. So is he being left in the yard alone where he's getting triggered by dogs that are being walked? Is he looking out the window? Are we, are we triggering in, an, in a manner out of the context that, that the, the, the needs for that behavior evolved? The frequency factor, um, the, the frequency factor should, should factor, factor in there. So that's a tough situation to be in. I mean, if he was a younger dog um, and, and, and this had happened and there's a history, like you go, holy crap, uh, maybe this dog's unstable. There's just too many unanswered questions. An eight-year-old dog to do, this is his first time and it's a big surprise to everybody. I really doubt this, but uh, it's possible. And that's why, you know, you, you've got to start, you got to work with somebody who knows what they're doing. Find, a, find a, a, somebody in your area who's a knowledgeable trainer. Um, lots of experience, and I don't mean sit foo foo for a treat. I mean they understand canine behavior and human behavior, and they understand the evolutionary psychology and biology of, uh, of this species, and all, all the things that really should go on in dog training that don't typically go on. So um, that can be hard to find. You'll we'll find a few books on my uh, uh, website on how to like discern between good training methods and bad training methods, and that kind of helps you find. Uh, who's a good trainer. Another book on um, how to train a dog, sort of. Again, how much can you learn from a book? Um, well, I used to think that I actually didn't want to write this book. It was the first book I ever wrote. Um, uh, it's called um, uh, Nature's Template, or called The Beautiful Balance, uh, Dog Training with Nature's Template. And uh, my hesitancy was is, you know, people should just find a trainer. But as I my career advanced, I, I started to realize it's hard to find a good trainer. How bad can it be? And it does really kind of open your eyes. It's really short and it does kind of explain some of the logical fallacies that are so rampant in the dog training world. And it sets a bit of a path forward for turning a dog like this around. Um, so it, it might be an option. And of course, uh, as I've mentioned in, in other videos, it's always the option of booking a session with me. I know that virtual may not uh, uh, sound that appealing, but if you actually s send me an email and ask me what it's all about, and I'll send you the information, um, you'll find that I will send you way more information. You'll probably learn more from the emails that I send people before they book an appointment than you will learn by going to a typical dog training session for six weeks. So uh, there's no loss in learning how, how, it, uh, how it works, but uh, um, it's not so much the, the V session itself, uh, that'll lay your foundation. It's what we're gonna do after that session with the follow-up uh, videos. Anyway, um, uh, I'm sorry that, uh, that um, th this is happening with this dog. That's a, that's a horrible situation for the, uh, the dog and the owner of the Chihuahua and uh, the dog itself because uh, these sort of things have very, often have very bleak out outlooks. I don't know who doesn't know how to do this, but everybody mentions it. So don't forget to subscribe and click the little bell if you want to be notified every time there's a new video. I try and put about one a week up. Uh, but if you really want to show your support for common sense and science and companion dog training and keep these videos coming, look for the buy me a coffee link in the notes. I can't tell you how good it makes me feel when I get notified that someone bought me the equivalent of a cup of coffee because they found the free content I provide helpful. Alternatively, don't forget to check out the eBooks that I've written. Again, there'll be a link in the notes. And if you have a dog that's turned one of your arms longer than the other, check out the dog training collar I designed. It's not a cure-all, but it will help.